In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're very welcome again to the Brendan Option, coming to you courtesy of Immaculata Productions. If you like our work, you might consider supporting us, first of all, by subscribing. Hit the subscribe button. Secondly, you might consider sending us, ach, I don't know, the price of a cup of coffee. Better still, the price of a pint. Every little helps. Don't underestimate it. Okay, doesn't need to be much. If enough people did it, it would keep us afloat. We don't want to get rich. Uh, we want to stay mean and lean. We want to stay, you know, sort of grunge cats. But at the same time, a, a little prosperity is necessary for the good life, as even St. Thomas allowed. So a few quid, a few quid, just to, you know, I don't know, keep the dog in Bonios or something. You know, something to just give us a hand. Having said that, let us go to the sublime. The last few I spoke about renewal of the priesthood, confessions, worthy reception of the Eucharist. I thought today I'd talk about something that's very easily ignored, but actually it's in a society of angels, they say you'd still have laws. I mean, you'd have to run the traffic. In a society of angels, I think you'd still, you'd still probably have to teach the angels their table manners, wouldn't you? I mean, you could be a saint and still, you know, burp at the table or something. I just wanted to suggest that maybe uh, God has table manners. Uh, and when we're all together in heaven, you know, there'll still be manners. And maybe now that we're at the Mass, which is a participation in the Divine Liturgy in heaven, you know that? Now that we're in the portal that is the Mass, how do we behave ourselves? How do we go home without having disgraced our kith and kin, okay, before the Lord? Well, I mentioned the last day, okay, at least, you know, dress for the occasion, you know, dress up, look good. So there you are in the church, smart as a tack. I mean, you just cut iron with the, the just outrageous coolness, sharpness, snappiness of your outfit. You're worthily prepared. Your soul is scrubbed, absolutely brilliant. And so you're ready to go to communion. You're there in a state of immaculately tailored grace. Is there anything missing? Well, if you push your way into the seat and jam your elbow into the gullet of the granny behind you, yes, you could say there probably is something missing. We still have to treat each other well in the church, make room for each other in the pews, put up with crying children. Will you please not get thick when little babies cry? That's the sound of the future. That's sweeter than a choir. If you're a corrupt old parish priest like me, all you can hear is, is, is ka-ching as babies cry, right? That's a future. There's nothing wrong with crying babies. Crying adults, okay, that could get tedious. Okay, it's not as cute. But I've seen people send daggers at a crying baby, but they don't send daggers at somebody gobbing away at the back and having a conversation. So maybe we should be looking at that because the baby has an excuse. I mean, he's a baby. You know, you're a baby, you're a baby. But you're no baby. I've seen people carry on full conversations, devout Catholics, at the top of their voices at the back of the church before Mass. It ruins the reverence in the church. It ruins what good restaurants call the fine dining atmosphere they're trying to preserve. That's not pretension, I know what they're talking about. It improves people's appetite if there's a fine atmosphere, a nice atmosphere kept in the dining room. You know, if nobody's shouting, nobody's talking too loudly, there's a murmur of conversation, good fun going on at the tables, good food being served and enjoyed, the waiters are quiet, discreet, unobtrusive, highly professional, warm and pleasant. That just makes people, it's a foretaste of heaven, it makes people so happy for a few hours. Heaven will be like that. I'm convinced of it. So why can't we make our church like that? 
Why do we have to listen to people? Why do we have to listen to people? Uh, I don't mind somebody's mobile phone going off. It can happen to anyone. What drives me cracked is where somebody lets it go off. It takes ages to do anything about it. Or better, worse still, answers it. You know? And walks out of the church having started a conversation on the phone. I've seen that happen. Switch the phone off. You're ruining it. You're ruining it for yourself as well. Make an investment. Make an investment in your spiritual comfort. The church should be an oasis of peace. It should be a place full of reverence and awe. Rightly, because it is a terrible and beautiful place where you meet the living God. You go in there not to hear profane conversations. It literally, in the literal meaning of the word profane, has conversations which are more suitable for the field or the town square. They're not suitable conversations for inside. If you've anything to say to your neighbour, keep it in a whisper and keep it to a minimum. Make it the least sound possible. Go to the loo before mass. If you have a problem and have to go to the loo often, sit as near to the convenience as you can so that the whole church doesn't have to watch you go. You're, it'll distract people. You say back to me, you're being hard. <sighs> Look, I don't see why we should cheat ourselves of an incredible gift. Our forefathers, when they had nothing spent, spent a fortune building beautiful churches. Why shouldn't we enjoy this taste of heaven? The most beautiful thing this side of heaven is the Mass. And so the etiquette that you should observe in it is one that not alone allows your neighbour to pray but leads you in to pray. So you arrive at the back, take holy water. You should have a certain level of finesse and refinement about this. Take holy water, don't shove your head into it. I don't know, drink it, right? Take a little holy water, don't send it all over the floor. Bless yourself, genuflect, right? Right knee should hit the ground. Not too hard. There's no need to overdo it. Pray before Mass. Light candles. Use, use the holy pictures if you need to. That's what they're there for, the stained glass, the statues, whatever you need to to help you pray. If you're distracted, you're distracted. If you fall asleep, you fall asleep. That's all a part of being in the house of God. Uh, conversation, worldly conversations are not. Sloppy behaviour is not. Sloppy genuflection or none. Sloppy crossing of yourself is not. If your chest is itchy, scratch it. If you cross yourself, cross yourself. There are two distinct functions. The centre of the whole church is the presence of our Lord in the tabernacle. Now there's, or for a long time, there's been contempt of the theology of what's called the prisoner in the tabernacle. I love the image of the prisoner in the tabernacle. Jesus is a prisoner in the tabernacle. He has lowered himself to that ridiculous position for us. And we punish him not even so much with our sacrilege as with our indifference, which is a delayed, silent, deadly form of sacrilege, a long-lasting, long-acting sacrilege. Okay, you genuflect to the tabernacle. If you can't genuflect, bow. Every time you cross the path of the tabernacle, you genuflect. Listen to me. Make a call on this. Do you believe that that is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ or not? If you don't, do you respect the fact that the church believes it? If you respect the fact at least that the church believes it, treat it with respect. If you believe it, let me tell you that if you keep misbehaving in front of it, you lose your faith. Because as C.S. Lewis liked to remind his readers, and he was a Protestant, and they're considerably, you know, more restricted in terms of these sacramentals. We're physical beings. And what we do with our bodies affects our minds and our spirits. God has his own table manners. There are manners, there are netiquette to be observed in the church. The more you put into this, the vastly more you will profit. This is spiritual Bitcoin. It is the best investment you will ever make and God will not cheat you. You will get a full measure pressed down and flowing over. 
for a few simple gestures, a few minor considerations, a few elegant behaviours. Nothing big. Before you go, light a candle. And when you, for goodness sake, pay for the candle, it drives me cracked. I see these devout Catholics, they put in 20 cent and they take out a clutch of candles that could light up the city of Dublin. Do they really think the 20 cent covers that? And then if I went over and said it, they'd have said, well, that parish priest is the greatest, most avaricious old bag that ever was put into this parish. <laughs> is it any wonder the church is the way it is? But how do they expect us to pay the bills? If, look, you take a candle, pay for the candle, OK? I'm sorry, I couldn't resist putting it in. I'm sorry, OK? I'm sorry. I think that one of the ways we are cheating ourselves is we're not getting the full Catholic genius. The genius of the church is that it respects the materiality of life, its corporeality. Use the physicalities, the holy water, the pictures, the, 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 the physical place, the location of the tabernacle, everything. Use it. Go in. Talk to the Lord. Fall asleep in front of the Lord. Get distracted in the presence of the Lord but stay in his presence, keeping yourself as respectful and reverent as you can. And let me tell you that that is so fragrant to the Lord. That is such a beautiful thing to offer him. You can't offer him better than a humble and contrite heart. You can't offer him better than you going in and trying to do that. He loves you completely. I'm not trying to make you feel guilty, okay? He loves you completely. You're free to do this. You can afford it. Don't be so tight. You can afford to be generous. You can afford to be elegant. You can afford to be gracious and graceful in his presence. Mirror the liturgy and add your own beauty to the Mass. God bless you. God keep you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.